For most of 2020, it was the answer we craved. We saw hospitals pushed to the limit. Doctors and nurses collapsing from exhaustion. Americans sequestered at home, away from family and friends. And thousands and thousands and thousands dying from the coronavirus. If only we had a vaccine. It seemed out of reach. History had shown us that a vaccine takes years to develop and test. It couldn't possibly come in time. And yet, in a stunning testament to modern medicine and science, it arrived with shocking speed. The game changer to alter the course of a pandemic that has taken nearly three and a half million lives across the globe. A deadly disease met by an extremely effective medicine. Simple, right? Well, not exactly. Those who waited in long lines early on to get the vaccine would barely recognize the vaccination centers now. Supply has moved well ahead of demand, and it's become clear the shot is a hard sell for many. With the state quickly reopening, is there ample incentive to roll up your sleeve? Are the worries about vaccine safety warranted? Is it fair to demand vaccine proof for businesses or schools? Tonight, the answers to your questions through a unique partnership of Local 4, Fox 2 News, and 7 Action News. The Vaccine. Hi, and welcome to this statewide town hall meeting on the coronavirus vaccine. I'm Devin Skillian from Local 4, along with Huel Perkins from Fox 2 News and Carolyn Clifford from 7 Action News. Once again, usually competitors, we are of one mind in trying to beat the pandemic, Huel. And Devin, we hope that together we can reach everyone in Michigan with the truth about the COVID-19 vaccine. As we come to you with this town hall, more than half of the American population is fully vaccinated. And yet, with the vaccine in strong supply, demand is slowing dramatically. Carolyn. Well, Huel, I got to tell you, with limits lifted at businesses, schools, and the many places we live our lives, just how protected can we be? To what extent are we leaving American children at risk? And how do we move more people from hesitancy to immunity? So many questions, but a great panel of experts to answer them all. We are joined tonight by Dr. Jone Caldoun, Michigan's top medical executive who has helped guide the state through this pandemic. Dr. Rudolph Valentini, the chief medical officer for DMC Children's Hospital, and Dr. Adam Loring, a man who really understands how these vaccines work. He's an associate professor of infectious diseases, microbiology, and immunology at the University of Michigan. So I'm going to start things off tonight with this question for Dr. Caldoun. We have a popular question from several of our viewers like Joey, Jacqueline, and Sarah. They want to know how long vaccines will last. Also, when and how often could we need a booster? So that is an excellent question. And unfortunately, right now, we simply just, we just don't know. Uh, we know that there's research going on at the CDC and, and other people across the country who are doing studies now on how, how long uh, immunity from the vaccines last. But it still remains to be seen how long that lasts and if we will need a booster. I will say the state of Michigan will be ready. We've built out a robust vaccination effort across the entire state. And if we uh, do need a booster, we will be ready to provide it for everyone. All right. Good to hear. Thank you so much, Dr. Caldoun. Devin, I'm going to send it to you. Our next question comes to us is for Dr. Valentini, and this comes from Andrea. And I'll note that pretty much all of the questions we're bringing you tonight have come in a number of iterations and versions, like this one. Uh, doctor, the study involving 12 to 15 year olds involved only 2,300 children. Out of that, presumably only half received the vaccine. So, how can we say that this vaccine is safe for that demographic based upon so little scientific evidence and the lack of time that has passed for a determination of long term side effects? As Andrea puts it, and so many others would, this is my child. Doctor? Uh, thank you for that question. I think it's an excellent one. Um, it's true that there were only about 2,300 uh, children studied uh, in the 12 to 15 year age group. Uh, by the Pfizer vaccine that was uh, study was completed in late March and as stated 
There were about 1,200 in each group, 1,150 or so in each group. That is a small cohort or a small number of children that were studied. Uh, like even the original Pfizer and Moderna uh, vaccine trials, uh, we always have to start with a small group and then uh, roll it out to a larger uh, number of individuals. So now there are millions of, uh, many millions of Americans, many million of Michiganders who've been vaccinated. And this vaccine has been proven to be very, very safe. Um, so I, I think it is very safe to generalize it to the, the uh, pediatric age range. The original study group uh, was safe to 16 and over. So uh, I feel very safe recommending it to my patients. Um, and I have been doing so uh, for the past 10 to 15 days since it's been available for use. Um, so I feel very confident with this vaccine. I think it um, is something that should be strongly considered by parents for their children. My children are a little bit older. They've both been fully vaccinated. Uh, but if they were between 12 and 15, I would absolutely get them vaccinated. It was exactly the question I was going to ask you. A really important distinction if you'd uh, make that recommendation for your own kids. Hugh, all over to you. Uh, Devin, this is a viewer question for Dr. Loring. Paul is concerned about how quickly these vaccines were developed. He wants to better understand messenger RNA technology. How does it work and how do we know it's safe? Uh, so um, this is a great question. Uh, the mRNA technology has been out there for uh, several years. It's been um, under development uh, uh, for cancer as well as uh, uh, prior viruses. So I think there was a Zika virus vaccine that was the mRNA vaccine as well. So there's been a lot of work over the years uh, that kind of set the stage uh, for this vaccine, uh, these two mRNA vaccines that are uh, available now. Uh, so progress has been rapid, but there was a lot of work leading up to it. And they work, I sort of, uh, the best analogy I've heard is it's a little bit uh, as if your body, the cells in your body are short order cooks and uh, the mRNA vaccine is, is the instructions or, or, the, or the, uh, uh, the, when the waiter takes your order and then delivers it to the short order cook, um, that's the messenger RNA vaccine, it's that piece of paper uh, the cell makes the uh, directs your body to make hamburgers or uh, uh, pieces of the coronavirus and then it goes away it doesn't stick around and so uh, that's one of the uh, amazing things and part of the reason why this vaccine uh, has proven to be so safe uh, because it, it's a signal but it, it doesn't last and so uh, it kind of gets your body going to make an immune response but then um, your body moves on and then it hopefully protects you against against the virus in the future and because of that, there are no long-term effects that we know about. No, and um, uh, uh, to the question that went to Dr. Valentini as well, that um, in the history of vaccines, um, the uh, most, or if not all, um, side effects of the vaccine or adverse events or problems uh, usually become apparent within two months of when someone receives uh, the vaccine dose and all the trials then had that two-month period. And so. Um, I think at this point, with the many, many millions uh, people have gotten, there, there's a, a, unlikely to be some uh, surprise, uh, long-lasting effect of this vaccine. And then, like I said, the signal's there for a matter of hours, um, and that stimulates your immune response. Um, and then there's, there's nothing left. The mRNA is gone, the vaccine's gone, and it's just your body responding to what happened. Dr. Lowing, thank you. Carolyn, over to you. All right, thanks, Hugh. Now, this next question is for Dr. Valentini. Uh, Victoria and Juanita want to know, how about uh, vaccines and fertility? Can you debunk this connection between the COVID vaccine and infertility? I hear this from men and women. Where did this idea come from, and is it simply false? Uh, there's absolutely no, thank you for that question. There's absolutely no evidence that it affects fertility. Um, I'm not sure if this is something that uh, came up uh, through the social media and it's kind of grabbed some momentum. Um, fortunately, I think it has been, uh, there's really no uh, substance there at all. Uh, as uh, Dr. Loring mentioned, uh, the vaccine now has been used for better than six months. Uh, there's been no question that any of those type of things uh, occur. I'm glad to see that many pregnant women are stepping forward and getting vaccinated, many women of fertility ages are getting vaccinated. Uh, there, there's no value uh, statement there about uh, affecting fertility. So I'm sorry that that ever circulated. I, there's never been any scientific evidence to support that. Um, I wish that would go away and I wish people would feel confident to go ahead and get vaccinated 
males and females alike, um, because it's the responsible thing to do to protect themselves, protect their family, and protect their community. Um, I'm sorry that that continues to persist, but I think it's going away. Thank you for that question. Yeah, I hope this town hall is helping. Thank you so much, Dr. Devin. Back to you. All right, this one goes uh, to you, Dr. Caldoun. This comes to us from Raymond, and he says, uh, no one believes those who didn't want the vaccine will abide by the recommendation, quotes on the page, air quotes on television, the recommendation to wear a mask in public. Therefore, aren't I at greater risk to catch COVID in a milder form now than I was before the restrictions lapsed, even though I have been fully vaccinated? We get that question a lot too, Dr. Caldoun. Yeah, you know, that, that's an excellent question, but I'll say I, I agree that the CDC has put out guidance saying that people who are fully vaccinated, so two weeks after your last dose of the vaccine, they by and large can go about doing most of the things that they would have done otherwise, um, whether that's indoor or outdoors, um, not worrying about social distancing, and for most, not all, but most settings, uh, not really needing to wear a mask. So if you are fully vaccinated, uh, you are by and large going to be uh, protected. Not 100%, there, no vaccine is really 100%, especially if you have virus in the community, but these vaccines really work. I, I also can say that you know businesses still have the opportunity to mandate masks. We've seen uh, some colleges even coming out and saying that they're going to mandate vaccines for those who will be on their campuses starting in the fall. So I, I think particularly if you are still concerned. Um, people also have a choice. Even if you're fully vaccinated, you can still wear your mask out in public, even though the CDC has said, uh, by and large, you're protected. And that is a choice that you can make. And Dr. Caldoun, your thoughts on that are reflected in state policy. If you thought it was otherwise, I, I don't imagine we would be seeing uh, a return to some normalcy here that we're seeing right now in businesses, restaurants, and venues. Absolutely. You know, I'm quite pleased with the progress we've made. Our cases, percent positivity, hospitalizations have gone down significantly over the past several weeks. The CDC has, has done a robust evaluation of data and, and these vaccines work. Yeah. So we, we are certainly not out of the woods. The pandemic is not over, to be clear. We still have a robust vaccination effort that is going on. We still have robust testing that is happening. If people are symptomatic, we still want them to get a test. And we will be focusing on protecting our most vulnerable as well. So the pandemic is not over. But if you are vaccinated, you should feel really, really good that you can do most things safely. I do. All right, doctor, let's get back to Huel. All right, Devin, thank you. Dr. Loring, Geraldine has a question about allergies. Are the vaccines safe for children with allergies or for anyone taking allergy medication? Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, uh, the, uh, the only uh, allergies that people need to worry about um, with these vaccines, the mRNA vaccines, are as if you have an allergy to something that's in it. Um, and so if you have common allergies, you know, uh, bee stings or foods or, or antibiotics like penicillin um, or contrast dyes or other things like that, um, there's really no reason to think that you're gonna have an allergic reaction um, to the vaccine. And uh, uh, when, when you go to the vaccine, um, everyone uh, is, uh, stays around for about 15 to 30 minutes afterwards, um, just to make sure uh, in case there's a rare chance that someone has a reaction um, and then there's medical personnel around um, to uh, attend to you. But uh, again, um, this, this is an extremely rare thing. Uh, people who have reactions to the vaccine um, and it's, it's not uh, anything to do with common, al common allergies like to penicillin or other things like that. Well, that's good to know, doctor. Devin, back to you. Just uh, one commercial break during this town hall, and that's coming up right now. Stay with us, though. More of your vaccine questions answered when we come right back. We want to welcome you back to the Vaccine Town Hall, where our panel of experts is answering any questions you may have about getting the shot. Our next question is for Dr. Valentini. Uh, so, Dr. Valentini, with children ages 12 to 15 eligible for the COVID vaccine right now, can they get this from their pediatrician, and can they catch up on other vaccines at the same time, or do they need to spread vaccines out? So many families have been cooped up and haven't even gone to the doctor. So that's a great question, and it's something that's been addressed very recently. 
so uh, I was on a, uh, a town, my own little town hall last night with a group of pediatricians, and there are several pediatricians in the community that are offering the vaccine right in their office. You can certainly get them at a local pharmacy. Our hospitals are offering the vaccine as well. So there's good access. Um, if you go to the CDC website, uh, there's a link to vaccine.gov, and you could put in your zip code. You can put that you need the Pfizer vaccine because that's the only one approved for 12 to 15, and you can figure out where to get it near your home. Uh, with regard to um, the second half of the question was, can you repeat the second half of the question? Should they spread out the vaccines? Because, oh, yes. you know, Thank so you. many parents Thank are you, worried about kids getting more than one vaccine at the same time. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Carolyn. Sorry about that. So, so absolutely, the CDC has addressed the fact that you can get the COVID-19 vaccine coupled with the standard vaccines that are required. So if a child is behind on their measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, they can go ahead and get that vaccine at the same time they can get the COVID-19 vaccine. So no need to stagger those out. Uh, fortunately, this has been something that has been evaluated now and um, commented on by the CDC. And so absolutely can get the vaccine simultaneously. Wow, certainly good to hear. I'm sure a lot of parents will be happy to hear that. Devin, back to you. Yeah, Dr. Caldoun, we're back around to you here. And this question from Sandra, and it again focuses on children. She says, my elementary school, where I work as a support staff, says masks will no longer be a mandate next school year. She asks, how can this be when the vaccine has not even been approved for children 12 and younger and will still be a threat to others? Let's talk about younger children. Absolutely. So, of course, we're still concerned. We know there are some people who cannot get vaccinated because of maybe an underlying medical condition or the, specifically because of the age. So I think it's important to note that uh, the governor has stated that after July 1st, there will not be any broad uh, mask or epidemic orders, but we are still talking about how we can strategically and in a targeted manner, make sure we're protecting the most vulnerable. So more to come on that, but absolutely we understand that our younger children, I have a child in elementary school as well, uh, who will not be able to get vaccinated. And so right. we have to make sure we are protecting them. Right, all right, Dr. Caldoun. We're trying to get a few more questions in here as we go. Let's get back to Huel. All right, Devin, Dr. Loring, even as more of us get the shot, some families want to know if vaccinated parents can spread COVID to their unvaccinated children. Oh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, certainly had that in my household. Um, so uh, it's, it's becoming clear that the vaccines not only will protect uh, the parent um, from getting COVID, but also it makes it much less likely that someone will spread the virus to someone else. Um, and that's driven a lot of the recent CDC recommendations um, about what vaccinated people can do. Um, and uh, so it's not impossible, but it's extremely unlikely uh, that uh, a vaccinated parent would then spread the virus to their child. Uh, and certainly it's much less likely that they would spread the virus as if they weren't vaccinated. Um, and then uh, in case people are wondering, often it comes up because in many vaccines, you're dealing with a weakened virus is the vaccine. And I just wanna be clear that the, the vaccines we're talking about are just pieces of the virus. And so there's no risk of, of from the vaccine of, of spreading anything to anybody um, because it's not even really a virus. It's just a piece of or fragment um, of the actual uh, virus that causes COVID. So doctor, when you saw those crowds at the PGA Championship, when you saw those crowds cheering in the stadiums, are we approaching the point now where we can again gather in magnitude to watch sporting events, to cheer on our favorite teams? Are we there yet? Was that quite, was, I'm sorry, was that question for me? Yes, Dr. Loring? Oh yeah, um, I, you know, I think, uh, I think we might be getting there, but, I, but in order to really be, quote, back to normal, I think uh, we need to have more people vaccinated, I think. Um, uh, that uh, it's, it's basically a numbers game. And, and the more people are vaccinated, the safer we all are. Um, and we have these various things that you know, keep us all safe, whether it's masks, whether it's physical distancing, staying outdoors and not doing too much in large groups indoors, um, and then the vaccine. And it's a combination of these that keep us safe. And so um, once we get more and more people vaccinated, 
um, we'll be able to kind of loosen up these other things and still be safe and protect those of us who um, may, you know, uh, need us. Um, there's some people who don't uh, respond well to the vaccines or aren't as well protected of them because of other medical conditions. And so it's important for all of us to uh, do as much as we can to protect everybody. Absolutely. Carolyn, back to you. All right. Thanks, Huel. Uh, Dr. Caldoun, this question is for you. If you've had COVID and you ended up getting long hauler syndrome, is there really a benefit to getting the vaccine? I've heard a lot of people worried, especially if they have long hauler syndrome. But is there a benefit to getting the vaccine? Absolutely. So the CDC has actually recommended that people who have already had COVID and are not in the middle of their acute illness, that they still get vaccinated. There's some early studies out that, that show that people who have had COVID and get the vaccine, they may have uh, even greater protection than those who just uh, have the vaccine alone. Again, that's very early um, studies that have come out. But bottom line, if you have already had COVID, we still recommend that you get the vaccine because the data shows that the vaccine provides better, uh, greater immunity against COVID-19. So another reason to go get that shot. Devin, I'm going to send it back to you. Dr. Caldoun, as someone who has spent so much time advising the governor, the last question tonight is for you. And I think uh, we watched as we were making some targets for people to hit to get the vaccine. It was almost like we were saying, look, you can have your dessert if you'll just eat your green beans. And then we came along and said, well, you're going to get your dessert anyway. But please eat your green beans. Have we created enough incentive for people to go ahead and still get the vaccine or did we wipe that out? Well, you, you know, the bottom line is we have to follow CDC guidance. The CDC has been evaluating the data and they've come out and, and, and said that by and large, people who are fully vaccinated can go about doing the things that they want to do. So that's that's really, really important. We are still again, the pandemic is not over. We still have a very aggressive effort to bring vaccines into communities, working with faith-based communities, uh, bringing vaccines even to people's homes if they need to have a vaccine in their home. So the pandemic is not over and we still are seeing every day more and more people getting vaccinated. I was pleased to hear that a lot of pediatricians are, have vaccines in their office as right, well. Right. That's really important. Um, so so I, I think we just have a little work to do when it comes to vaccinations, but we will get there. Well, and we certainly hope this program will help as well. And these terrific experts we've heard from tonight who you've been hearing from. Now, here's a message from Governor Whitmer. Hi, it's Governor Gretchen Whitmer. There's no denying we've had a hard year, but we got through it because of each other. And I'm proud of every Michigander who stepped up for their family and community through this pandemic. I want to especially thank all the essential employees who put their own health at risk and worked so hard to keep us all going. I also want to give a special shout out to all of our local public health executives and to Dr. Janae Caldoun, or Dr. J, as we like to say, for her leadership as Michigan's chief medical executive. We've made incredible progress in 2021. Over 160 million Americans have gotten the safe, effective vaccines, including nearly 60% of Michiganders. We're returning to normalcy thanks to the millions of Michiganders who've gotten vaccinated. The vaccines are also the key to our economic recovery. If we want to come back stronger than ever, we all have to do our part to get our shots so that we can keep ourselves and our families and our communities safe. Once again, Thank you for everything you did for one another over the past year. Soon we can all enjoy the summer we crave. I know we can all feel a sense of hope and I am optimistic about the year ahead. And the governor and the doctors aren't the only ones encouraging you to get vaccinated. Well, we got a few other very familiar voices and faces who are also here urging you to act. Absolutely. I think Michigan sports fans will recognize these four. Take a look. I'm Dan Campbell, head coach for the Detroit Lions. We want to see you and your family celebrating at Ford Field soon. Be informed. Be safe. Do what's best for you and your family. We can beat this deadly virus and go back to living our lives together. Hi, this is Jeff Lush, head coach of your Detroit Rivers. We knew this wasn't going to be an easy one. Get the information you need 
we can beat this deadly virus and get back to enjoying the things we love to do together. Hi, I am Miguel Cabrera with the Detroit Tigers. I'm together with my team, I got the COVID-19 vaccines, tested for safety and trusted by doctors. This vaccine works. It's proving to protect me and you. So go Tigers and get you vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine. I got vaccinated and it is a great feeling of comfort to know that I am protected. I educated myself and it is really the best way for all of us to be safe and get back to all the activities that we enjoy. I got vaccinated too. We definitely want to thank the governor and the leaders of Detroit's professional sports teams for those messages and a special thanks to our guests, Dr. Jonay Caldoun, Dr. Rudolph Valentini, and Dr. Adam Loring for all of their insight tonight. Carolyn, I'm vaccinated too. That's all the time we have right now, but we remain committed to this partnership and the effort to get Michiganders educated about the vaccine. And Skillion makes three. And I know all of us have been really uh, impressed and proud of local news media all over the state for the way that we've been trying to separate fact from fiction. I think we've helped tonight. For Huel Perkins, Carolyn Clifford, and the three stations we represent, I'm Devin Skillion. Thanks so much for watching, and so long from Detroit.